So we are going to start by looking at some new words. Um, there's only three of them for today. And then I think later in the week, we will look at a few more. So our first word we're looking at is surge. Surge. So what do we see? What do we, what do we think? What do we think it means? Oh, f oh I hate computers. They hate me too, I know. Don't want in between. Maybe the current. Okay, maybe the current, okay. A storm surge. Um, on the ocean, doing surge. Okay, we can do this, April. We can do this. Okay, sign report. All right, so, Serge, let me read you the sentence. It says, a surge of water rose onto the concrete landing below our house. Surge. What do you think it means? There is a sudden large increase in its debate. It is a, if there's a surge of water, there's a sudden large increase and it's death. A sudden large increase in death. Did I do it right this time? 44, maybe two pages. Oh yeah, did it right this time. Uh, okay, now we're gonna print, not back to back, we're gonna print don't want it front to back. We want both sides. All right, so that's our first word, surge. Our next word is perished. 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 What do we see? Disappear. Okay, disappear. Okay, what else? Um, when, when people or animals perish, they die. Okay, when people or animals perish, they die. So perish, did you get that out of the back of your book, Christopher? No. Cheater, because that's exactly what this says. When people or animals perish, they die. Rude. It's okay. And then our last one, without Christopher looking in the back of his book, is debris. Debris. It looks, really funny. <laughs> it looks like a hurricane. Debris. Um, maybe a Okay. It says the people of the town had to work hard to clean up the debris that was left behind by the damaging hurricane. Debris. Destruction. Destruction is debris is the pieces of something that was broken or destroyed, debris. We will come back to those words in a little bit and you'll define them in a little bit. Let's go on. We're going to look at the anchor chart, visual, visualize, excuse me, cannot speak today. Remember when you visualize something, you're using your senses to create a picture in your mind as you read. You say, what do I see in my mind? What do I smell? What do I hear? What would I feel? What would I taste? You visualize something. This is your personal um, seeing, feeling, hearing, touching. So we're gonna turn to page 190 in our book. Page 190 in our reading book, please. 190. Galveston hurricane. And we're gonna do our read to understand. First, we're gonna look at the genre of the story. The genre is a narrative nonfiction. Narrative nonfiction. A narrative nonfiction gives factual information and by telling a true story about people, places, or events. 
A personal narrative tells about an important event in a real person's life. Authors of narrative nonfiction and personal narratives present events in sequential or chronological order. Narrative nonfictions tell about events from the past. Events are told from a secondhand point of view and personal narratives give firsthand account about any experience. So look at the photograph on the next page where the title is. This text describes events that happened in 1900. What do you want to learn about this event? Write your ideas down. to learn about this event. Um, I want to learn about um, the hurricane and when it was. Okay, the hurricane and when it was. Okay. Anybody else want to learn anything about it? What that hurricane was like. Okay, what that hurricane was like. All right. What do you think uh, the purpose of a narrative nonfiction is for a reader? What's the purpose of the author writing a narrative nonfiction? Um, to give you information. To give you, to inform you of things that happened in the past, yes. Now, this is written in uh, personal narratives give a first-hand account on an experience and it's told from a first-person point of view. So remember those first-person point of view pronouns, I, me, my, mine, we, is talking about um, their personal experience with that. All right, let's keep going. So next page, 192. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we're reading it right now. All right, it says, In 1800, Galveston, Texas was a busy commercial port. It was also a popular place to vacation. The city sat just along the Gulf of Mexico. Warm waters lapped along its beaches. It would have been an ideal place to visit at the time. But Galveston was on a barrier island. Barrier islands can slow down storms approaching the mainland. They take the impact of the damaging winds and storm surges that accompany a hurricane. This was Galveston's fate. A few days before the great storm, scientists predicted the storm's path would go along the east coast of the United States. Unfortunately for the 38,000 residents of Texas, the storm changed direction. On September 8, 1900, the hurricane struck. 
The Hurricane's Arrival. The ocean swelled. Waves rose 20 feet within hours. The storm surge easily flooded the island that Galveston called home. Wind speeds grew to 135 miles per hour. It was a Category 4 hurricane, the worst natural disaster in U.S. history. Buildings were shattered from the storm's force. They washed up near other collapsed buildings. People who hid in these structures were crushed. Other people drowned. The storm wiped out entire blocks and destroyed about 3,600 homes. About 8,000 people perished in the storm. What was Galveston like before the hurricane? A nice place, all right, what else? Look in your text. It's right there in the second, second sentence. It's a vacation. It's a place where a popular place for people to go vacation at. All right. How did the hurricane affect the island and the people of Galveston? It destroyed houses. People died or drowned or were crushed. It killed some people. Um, yeah, it damaged the city. There were 135 mile per hour winds. Rising water shattered buildings and entire blocks of homes. It caused lots of destruction. It caused lots of destruction. All right, next page. Milton Elford was a young man living in Galveston with his mother, father, and a young nephew, Dwight. Milton was the only member of the family to survive the storm. He described his experience in a letter to his brother in North Dakota. This portion of his letter begins as the rising water and intensity of the storm persuaded his family to leave their home for a sturdier brick house across the street. We left our house about four o'clock thinking we would be safer in a larger house, not dreaming that even that house would be washed away. We went across the street to a finer large house built on a brick foundation high off the ground. About five, it grew worse and began to break up the fence. The wreckage of the other house was coming up against us. Right here at the, um, Caption for the text, it says, Galveston was a busy commercial port before the storm. It says, who is Milton Elford and how many people, and how many people are in his family? Who is Milton Elford and how many people are in his family? Speak a little louder. He was a young man. He was a young man. Where he was living, where? Um, with his mother and father and a young nephew. All right. So there are how many of them, including Milford? Um, four. Four. Why does the author of the text consider Milton Elford important? What was that? Why? Does the author of the text consider Milford, Elford, important? Because he was the one who survived. He was the one who survived. He lived through the storm. He was able to write about his experience in a letter. All right, next page. We had a range that if the house showed signs of breaking up, I would take the lead and Pa would come next with Dwight and Ma next. In a way, I could make a safe place to walk 
as we would have to depend on floating debris for rafts. There were about 15 or 16 in the house besides ourselves. They were confident the house would stand anything. If not for that, we would probably have left on rafts before the house went down. We all gathered in one room. All at once, the house went down, went from its foundation, and the water came in waist deep, and we all made a break for the door, but could not get it open. Then smashed out the window, and I led the way. I had only part way out when the house fell on us. I was hit on the head with something and it knocked me out into the water head first. I do not know how long I was down as I must have been stunned. I came up and got hold of some wreckage on the other side of the house. I could see one man on some wreckage on my left and another on my right. I went back to the door that we could not open. It was broken in and I could go part way in. As one side of the ceiling was not within four or five feet, I think, of water, there was not a thing in sight. Galveston, after the storm, approximately 3,600 homes were destroyed. Next page. I went back and got on the other side, but no one ever came up that I could see. We must all have gone down the same time but I cannot tell why they did not come up. I then started to leave by partly running and swimming from one, of, one lot of debris to another. The street was full of tops and sides of houses and the air was full of flying boards. I think I gained about a block of, on the debris in this way and got in the shelter of some building but they were fast going down and I was afraid of getting buried. Just then the part I was on started down the street and I stuck my head and shoulder in an old tool chest that was lying in the debris that I was on. I could hardly hold this down on its side for being blown away, but that is what saved my life again. When the water went down about 3 a.m., I was about five blocks from where I started. My head was bruised and legs and hands cut a little, which I did not find until Monday, and then I could hardly get my hat on. As soon as it was light enough, I went back to the location of the house. Not a sign of it could be found. Not a sign of any house within two blocks, where before there was scarcely a a vacant lot says the storm shattered buildings and destroyed entire blocks of homes. Who is Alfred writing about in paragraph eight through ten? he writing about? Not what was he writing about? Who was he writing about? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. That's still a what? Who is he writing wow. about? Who is he looking for? Who? He's, his not look, he's not looking for himself. His, mom, his, his family members and the people that were in the house. It says in paragraph 10, he writes that he cannot tell why they did not come up. It says, cite evidence from the text to explain this comment. It says, Elfer was the leader. He was halfway out when the house fell, but others were still inside. When Elfer was hit on the head and knocked into the water, he came up on a different side of the house. He saw nothing when he went back because of the people behind him either perished from falling debris or drowned. It says, visualize Elford's return to the location. What do you think he, how did he feel? How did, what did he see? Maybe what did he smell? What did he hear? Probably a lot of noise because they were all scared. 
Yeah. Bobby, a lot of noise. Is everybody scared? All right. How did he feel? He probably felt upset because he lost his family. Um, he's probably like, well, what he probably um, could see in his mind what it was before and then now what it is. It says, Alfred looks shocked and incredibly upset at the seeing that nothing but debris and he cannot find any of his family members. Mm, 196. It says, after the storm. The storm passed in early morning hours of the next day. The residents of Galveston began the task of cleaning up the wreckage and rebuilding the city. These efforts include raising the building up to 17 feet by pumping sand beneath the foundation. A sturdy seawall was built along the ocean front, but what was once the busiest seaport in Texas was forever changed. The devastating storm convinced shippers to move north to Houston. It took over a decade for Galveston to rebuild, to fully rebuild and become the thriving city it once was. All right, let's look at the collaborative discussion questions right here on page 197. It says, look back at what you wrote on page 192. No, we're not doing that part. It says, reread page 192. Why weren't the people of Galveston prepared for the hurricane? So going back to page 192. Why were the people not prepared for the hurricane? Why were they not prepared for the hurricane? Write it down. Miss Pfeiffer? Yes. Since I can't find my pencil, can I just tell you what's written down? Yeah. But you're going to need a pencil today, so you're going to need to go find one. All right, let's look at number two. It says, review page 193. What details show that Alfred's family planned to go to the house across the street made sense? Let me read it again. It says, what details show that Alfred's family planned to go 
to the house across the street made sense. Number three, how is the information in each account of the hurricane similar and how is it different? It says, how is the information in each account of the hurricane similar and how is it different? Like in first-hand account um, and second-hand account. So first-hand means that you're the one experiencing it. Second-hand means you're explaining from somebody else's point of view. Really? Who is that? How the time in there? Where you're at? I don't remember the name, but it was on the news face every time I read it. Hmm. Um, I don't remember. I'm going to search it. Let's look back at number one. All 
Alright, so it says, why weren't the people of Galveston prepared for the hurricane? Why were they not prepared? Well, not really. Why, um, if we go back to page 192 and we reread that section, it says it's busy commercial. Uh, hold on, let me go to the actual thing. It says, a few days before the great storm, scientists predicted the path would go along the east coast of the United States. Unfortunately, for about 38,000 residents of Texas, the storm changed direction. So it says, why were they not prepared? Because it changed direction. It was not supposed to come to them in the first place. So they were thought they were, they were, you know, they weren't gonna be hit by it. Wait, what question are you on? Number one. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, number two. Says, review page 193, what details show that the Elfords family's plan to go to the house across the street made sense? It was made of brick. They thought it was safer because it was bigger? Yes. And then number three. How is the information in each account of the hurricane similar and how is it different? Well, it says in the first-hand account, the information is only about what happened to that one person. In the second-hand account, the information is about what happened to Galveston in general um, as a whole, as a town. Both accounts tell about how the hurricane affects people of Galveston. How That's how it's similar. They're different because one is just from how somebody their experience and then the second hand is how about the town and then the last is um, how they are the same is it's both about the experience they had with Galveston and the storm all right we are let's take our three words so far, and we're gonna write the definition in our notebook or in our or on a piece of paper in our binder. Now we're gonna have more that we're gonna need to do later in the week, so do not lose this paper. Okay, so our words are it's only three of them, so surge. Parish. Perished and debris. So you need to find that in the back of the book. Definition in the back of the book and then um, go get on Freckle until 925. And then we will do start math at 925. Okay?
Once you've written the definitions, go get on Freckle. There should be two assignments up there if you didn't complete both of them yesterday. And then come back here at 925 for math. Wonderful. Then you can go on there and do some fat practice. Okay. All right.